The circuit is actually quite simple. Ignore basically this side of it because it's just the other channel as this particular product is a stereo version, i.e. two mono blocks, exactly the same. It runs on an HT of 250 volts. I haven't measured the current yet, but I think from memory it's a, it's a couple of milliamps. It's, it's very low. We'll go into the power supply a bit later on. This is the magic eye. This preset pot adjusts how far the display closes or opens, I should say, depending on how you look at it. So it should be so it's just visibly open. The heaters of the valve are standard 6.3 volts. And as this power supply actually runs on 12 volts, again, more of that later, the two valves heaters are simply put in series, which will give you just over 12, 12 volts, which is fine. This transistor here is just a very simple preamp. It's just enough to give the drive on the grid, pin one, that little bit extra. So this is basically an AC amplifier and the signal comes off it through a relatively small capacitor because you don't want too much low end coming into the circuit and is rectified by these diodes. And then the resulting DC goes on the grid, um, which swings up and up and down the cathode on pin three goes straight to ground pin seven and pin nine are linked together now it says here pins two six and eight in reality you only need to connect to one of them because all three are internally connected within the valve the transistor gets its power supply say through this resistor here and that takes the 250 volts down to 30 volts via this Zener diode and smoothed by this capacitor. There's nothing much to say about the amplifier it's a very very basic circuit needless to say no feedback or anything like that simply because it's not required it's a very crude um, amplifier and it does give a degree of impedance matching because the grid would like to see a quite a high impedance and obviously if you fed the signal in from a music player of some sort which would be inherently low there could be um, some very strange readings so this preamp offers a relatively low impedance input and offers a relatively high impedance output which is exactly what you need. Now even though this was a kit of parts this is actually the power supply and it was supplied ready built whether they always are or whether the kit was out of stock of the parts to make yourself I don't know but this is basically the module that provides 12 volts input here DC and out this end comes the high voltage and is adjusted by this potentiometer and it gives a range of something from memory um, of about 180 to just under 300 volts and you adjust this um, for 250 volts which is what the product requires. It's basically a step up driver and there's the inductor that's the capacitor on the input and that's the capacitor on the output and they're suitably well rated. There's just two active devices there's a transistor here and a larger transistor there which does get moderately warm. This is a voltage device 
and not a current device. Of course, here we have the obligatory LED. Everything has to have an LED. The large device here, I think you should be able to see, is an IRF 740 for those that like to look things up. Now the chip on here, you can probably identify, but looking through the viewfinder of the camera, I can't read the numbers. But Now this is the lash up that I have put together, simply because eventually the valves are going to be on a metal chassis. But just to see if it all works okay, I've put it together here. This is the drive circuitry, which I'll show you closer in a minute. And this thing here is nothing to do with the kit at all. Um, the only reason I'm using it, because I'm not actually running it off a 12 volt lead acid battery. And you could argue that I could feed it directly from that. But this has the beauty of fine tuning the voltage, but mostly it has current limiting on it. This is the drive board, and if we come out just a fraction. The connector on the top is basically audio in, so that would be left, earth, right, earth, and the center to, the, in this case, the orange wire is HT and the blue wire is ground. On the side blocks this is exactly the same as this one but from the other way around and these pins all go to the valve base. Looking at the box, I just pulled that out and it was holding it up. This pot is the one in the HT lead and adjusts the um, amount of movement. Imagine my fingers are the display. You can make it go in or out. I'll show you, you that presently. And the other pot here, imagine the board's symmetrical, so we're just looking at this side. This pot adjusts the gain of the preamp stage. Other than that, there's nothing remarkable to tell you. It all went together very easily. These power resistors here are actually um, two watt resistors and they do get moderately warm because uh, this one in particular that's what takes the HT down from 250 to 30 volts with that Zener and that's the Zener diode here. The only thing you obviously have to be aware of you can't get the transistors around the wrong way they're both the same obviously and they're labeled on the board with a relevant picture. The diodes again are marked Capacitors are electrolytics here and clearly have to be the right way around. This one I chose simply because it has a proper valve base, i.e. one that you can screw onto a metal chassis, which is what my plan was. Some of the kits have the valve holder mounted actually on the PCB. And that makes it less versatile, but more easy to set up, so to speak. Here you've got all the wires which you have to link up. I mean, it's no big deal, but um, you still have to do that. Whereas if the valve was mounted directly on the PCB, I have to say that initially when I got this, I was really furious with the distributor because there was no circuit diagram given. And although the pins are numbered on the bottom of this board, they don't correspond to the pins on the valve. So if it says pin 1, pin 1 doesn't mean it goes to pin 1 on the valve base. And that initially caused me all sorts of problems. Because short of trying to trace this through, and it's very hard because it's a black PCB, and you can't see easily where the traces go. But I complained to the distributor and I must admit they, they did respond very quickly and now the site that I purchased this from actually shows you that circuit diagram that I gave you previously. The thing that made me want to um, make this kit up is the fact that I've 
for those of you that have seen my previous but one video where I assembled the valve amplifier this used this very same magic eye and whilst it has nothing whatsoever to do with the sound of a product it doesn't offer any gain in fact it's purely a visual display this is the um, amplif the power supply I'm going to plug the 12 volts from the battery in here and that's reading the output and the current is set to about 500 milliamps but I'm using it purely in case of cock-ups and other things so here we go with a little module and that's got to go in between there so we'll just connect that up so this will be our 12 volts DC Now we want that one go to the positive so this is the HT it would help if I had a Phillips screwdriver actually instead of this one but still right we should be ready to go all I'm going to do now is press that button and the heaters are connected to it as well so if I push this down a bit and turn the valve around so you can see it here goes the power the obligatory LED is on there and you should see the valve come alive any minute here we go it's just beginning and as that warms up that will open up and it's actually ready for modulation about now now I did mention on the here this pot controls how open or closed it is so you could have it very open like that or somewhat more closed I like to see it about there something like that and the other one well they both look exactly the same so there's not much point in showing you that one as well we'll open that up just a fraction more there we go and I'll plug some music in there and you'll see it go there's a nice close-up view and for those of you that like to see valves glowing there is the cathode stroke heater in fact the part you see is in fact the heater the cathode is the piece immediately around it which considering this only consumes a couple of milliamps it does get too hot to touch in conclusion there's just something that i would like to point out before closing the video one of the valves was faulty on delivery and it produces a, a rather strange display with a shadow on it halfway down it's definitely the valve that's faulty because if you swap it to the other channel all is fine and i've reported this point to the distributor and i've asked him for a replacement valve now i will leave a comment later as to whether I received this valve back or whether there was any nonsense I do appreciate that it's not the suppliers fault that the valve is faulty but it is his responsibility to sort it out which I'm fairly confident particularly when he sees this video anyway it's great fun to make and for just under 30 New Zealand dollars pretty cool completely useless but pretty cool